This glorious beast is a Group A Rover SD1, built for the British car maker in the early 1980s by motorsport powerhouse Tom Walkinshaw Racing. Resplendent in its Marlborough livery, it was campaigned in the prestigious French Production Car Championship by reigning champion René Metch in 1983 and Grand Prix driver Jean-Louis Schlesser in 1984. Between them, they drove this very chassis to seven victories in what was a fiercely competitive championship. Restored a decade ago to its former glory by original TWR technician Ken Clark, this car is really enjoying its renaissance, having claimed no fewer than three historic touring car championship titles so far. And isn't it a monster of a car? By modern standards, the numbers are actually humble enough. You're looking at a weight of about 1,200 kilograms, brake horsepower about 330 but you have to remember that these cars were tuned to within an inch of their lives by one of motorsports most decorated preparers Tom Walkinshaw Racing. The naturally aspirated three and a half litre V8 engine of course sits up front but delivers its drive to the rear axle via a five-speed Gatrag gearbox. Slick racing tyres are mounted to these very cool 16-inch split rims each housing vented steel brake discs and coil-over damper suspension with McPherson struts on the front and trailing arms on the rear. So there are no tricks, no whizzy computers, no fancy driver aids babysitting the driver. This is raw analogue motor racing at its very best. Evocative in this livery, isn't it? It just grabs everyone's attention. I think I'm gonna like this. Well, the first thing you notice is that it's nowhere near as heavy as you might expect based on how it looks from the outside. You feel the car's weight through the steering wheel, but in terms of the way it rolls in the corner, it doesn't feel cumbersome at all. Gearbox nice and direct, very intuitive flip on the downshift. Always love it with the proper response so instantaneously. Brakes waking up. with the most exciting colour schemes and of course few were more striking than the now iconic red and white of Marlborough's famous livery. 
I dreamed of one day wearing those colours as a fully-fledged professional racing driver, and while that never quite happened in my career, I couldn't help while driving the Rover but smile at the flicks of fluorescent red and white that stretched out through the windscreen ahead of me. That is uh, thirsty work. I know I've been a bit of a lazy swine over the winter and need to get myself back down the gym, but I definitely feel the cobwebs are blown out. It's not that it's a heavy car, but you definitely feel the weight of the steering of the car through the steering wheel. And I think that that's largely because of the angle at which it comes towards you. It's got this tilt in it, which is actually very intuitive when you're going either side of neutral but when you have to crank on a lot of steering lock it really loads up the outside of your shoulder as your arm extends quite straight you end up gripping the steering wheel more with the palm of your hand than, than a fingertip grip but overall I'm mightily impressed I mean long-term subscribers to this channel might remember that we had a group 2 Rover SD1 on here not so long ago and unsurprisingly it's very similar I would say that whilst that perhaps had the slight edge in terms of horsepower, this has definitely got the slight edge in terms of handling and balance. The body roll is so much less than you would expect and it feels incredibly direct on the steering but also linear as you crank on the lock. There isn't a delay whilst the car takes a set, it's there immediately and it doesn't sort of roll, 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 snap. It just immediately loads up nice and progressively you feel exactly where it is from the beginning of your turn in and it stays there the whole way around so there's no surprises and I found that that helped breed confidence very early in the session and after just a couple of laps I thought yeah I get it I understand what this car is all about and I'd be very happy to race it right now exactly as it is handling wise I, I would hardly need to touch the setup. It feels nice. There's a little bit of push understeer, but normally that's me being a little bit impatient on the throttle. I can trigger some rear pendulum, a sort of a swing from the rear end of the car around the tighter apexes if I trail the brake in quite hard, quite deep into the apex. But all of these observations explain why the car is as good as it is because they're driver induced it means that fundamentally the car's doing a great job and the driver can tweak his or her own inputs to help compensate for any small handling deficiencies that there might be from tire degradation or a problem with the setup or just running heavy fuel at the start of a race but overall i'm encouraged i'd, I'd love to get out there and race it in the peter auto heritage touring cup or motor racing legends touring car grids there's quite a few fun categories out there now for touring cars of this era and i can really start to understand the appeal